Think fast. What do you call a number that can't sit still? If you want to find out the answer, you'll have to wait till the end of this video. In this video, we're going to review how to use the calculator on your Chromebook. We want to make sure that everyone understands how to use the features before testing begins. So the first thing we probably need to know how to do is open up our calculator. So in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, you'll see a circle. If you click on that and don't immediately see your calculator in this home row, you might have to click the arrow to be able to access it here. Uh, out of all of your apps, you might have to search a little bit. Mine is right up here in the left hand corner. For testing, we do need to have the calculators on full screen. So if it pops up small like mine, you're just going to click this square here to make it go to the full screen. Here are a couple things we're going to go over. First, we're going to start off with how to type in a negative number. So we need to figure out negatives 4 plus 7. In our calculator, our negative button is down here. It looks like a plus slash a minus, and that's just going to change numbers from being positive to negative. But in order to do that, you actually need to type the number first, and then you'll need to press that button. So that's turned my 4 into a negative 4, and then I'll just add 7 to it. And when I push the equal sign, I'll get that answer of 3. Next up is fractions. Here we need the fraction 3 fourths. Uh, if I want to put that in my calculator as a reminder, 3 fourths is really the same thing as 3 divided by 4. So I'll just type in 3 divided by 4. It's going to look like this over here, so it's not going to appear like a fraction. But when I press equals, I still get 0.75, which has the same value as 3 fourths. 4% our calculator does have a button 4% so if I forgot that 60% is the same thing as 0.6 because we moved the decimal twice I can type in 60 and then press the percent button and then of 5 just means times 5 so 60% of 5 I'll type in 60 press my percent button down here and then type in times 5 and when I press equals I end up with an answer of 3. Next up is probably the most difficult one is the use of the parentheses and the save key. So this calculator does not have parentheses on it. So we need to use our order of operations to remember that we need to solve the parentheses first. So first I need to solve two minus three, and then I'm gonna take five and I'm gonna add my answer from the parentheses. So in our calculator here, first we'll just start two minus three. When we press enter, we get negative one. So this answer is not too bad, but if it was a complicated answer that I don't want to retype, I can press this A equals button and it's going to save negative one as the value of A. So even if I clear my calculator and I go back and I press A, it's now going to retype whatever I saved as the A equals. So it's negative one. So I needed to take five plus what was ever in the parentheses. So five plus my answer from the parentheses I saved as A. And when I press equals, then I'll get my final answer of four. And the last couple things we need to talk about are exponents and square roots and how to type those into our calculator. So we'll try five to the third. If you're using any exponent other than squaring it, um, squaring it, we'll just use the x squared button down here. But if we're using any other exponent, we need to type our base number in first. So five, then we'll type this y to the n. We use that key, and then when we type in the 3, this is doing 5 to the 3rd power. So it looks kind of funny over here, but that's how we're going to type in 5 to the 3rd. When I press equals, I get 125, which again is the same thing as 5 times 5 times 5. And the last one we had was just the squared root of 64. Squared root, again, looks a little bit like a check mark. So on our calculator, if we want to use the squared root feature, that's found right here. But we do need to type in our number first. So we're going to have to type in 64, and then we will use our squared root key by clicking on it, and we get our answer of 8. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. What do you call a number that can't sit still? A Roman numeral. On a more serious note, good luck on your test today. Do your best, and you'll do great.